good morning to everybody. Good morning. Hopefully this video, as I said, I will jump in every once in a while. I will jump in into Facebook and do a video for you guys. Uh, hopefully this video will get out there and you guys will get the notifications later on tonight. Uh, violence increase. Good morning to everybody. Good morning. God bless you all. God bless uh, my country of Mexico, my city of Tijuana. God bless the United States of America. Uh, God bless everyone. <clears throat> Let's thank God for another day. Today is a beautiful Wednesday. Uh, over here, it's, uh, I think it's 7.35 or 7.40 in the morning. Over here in Tijuana, Baja, California, Mexico, it's partly cloudy and with speculations of rain later on tonight and a storm coming in on Thursday into our city. How's everybody doing? Good morning to everyone. Violence increase in our city of Tijuana and also in our country. Violence has increased and uh, in a <clears throat> really uh, important percentage that it's catching everybody's eyes over here in our city. As we have the most violent president in history uh, in our nation of Mexico, the most violent president that started his uh, presidency in the first uh, year, almost we're going to a year, uh, in this uh, most violent year, more than 28,000 murders and zero increase on the economy. The insecurity in every level, on every city, on every part of the country is increasing. Just so we read, the persistency of the President of the United States to pressure Mexico to resolve the situation between the violence of the cartels in our country has increased also. It has increased to a point that they're not letting the foot down. Uh, apparently, there was a message thrown to the president that he needs to resolve the situation between Mexico and the cartels. That he needs to resolve peacefully and rapidly the situation between the insecurity of the citizens of Mexico. And that if they cannot do it, there is going to be an intervention. An inter the, the United States is going to intervene. That that is the problem that Mexicans are not going to like. Practically, I am against that. Uh, we don't need another government to intervene. What we need is our government to do their job. It's what we need. It's Mexican government to stop being corrupt. What we need is the Mexican officials stop being corrupt and stop doing their job that is protecting the Mexican citizens. That is what we need. That is what we need. And as we know, uh, the new, the resign, uh, to resign the International Pact of Immigration is coming on 11 of December. It's coming on the 11 of December the re-signing of the International Pact of Immigration. Past 11 of December 2018, we signed that pact. In the words of Marcelo Ebrard, the Conciliar and the uh, Head of International Relations in our country, this was uh, his words back in the 11 of December 2018. <clears throat> we are signing this pact for humanitarian reasons. We are signing this pact for <clears throat> for uh, for humanitarian reasons to help not only the countries of the Triangle of Central America, but to help the world and to increase a better living for not only for the people of Central America, but for the people that they are migrating across the globe. <clears throat> it's funny how this kind of uh, individuals that live in our country and have this incredible you know responsibility of being the consular and also the head of international relations they have this responsibility with other countries but their responsibility with our country is horrible 
It is embarrassing what they're doing to our country. So embarrassing that, as I told you, we've got more than 28,000 murders and he's letting everybody know that we are the third world secure country and that he's considering more than a thousand percent to re-sign the International Pact of Immigration and in June, April or June, it comes the another pact. The other pact is the International Pact of Education. That is another pact that a lot of people are not putting attention to that I will do another live video later on this afternoon on, on, on YouTube as we are going tonight uh, at 6.30 we are going live at a particular shelter over here at YouTube. Be sure to watch at 6.30 as I'm going to go live at a particular shelter at YouTube and also be aware on this weekend as we are going to show you the new shelter that is getting built for 5,000 people in our city of Tijuana later on tonight I will explain the International Pact of Education that is the new pact <clears throat> that the United Nations the United Nations is trying to implement on every 154 country what is the United Nations Pact of Education that is now that you need to provide schools and you need to provide education for every single minor that is walking on the caravan or is walking migrating what is, what is this about? Who's funding this United Nations Pact of uh, Education? As, as it says, the United Nations. It is really important for us to know that at this particular moment, at this particular juncture, we already know that if they sign this United Nations Pact of Education, it means that the United Nations has been here for the longest of time. And they are moving rapidly to create schools and to create the opportunity for education for people that are coming migrating from exile from their city, from their countries as it is as Central America, South America, and across the globe. Now, going back to the increase of violence and delinquency, as this has opened another door for probably an intervention or to a government of to in, the government of the United States to intervene. The LeBron uh, situation has not been resolved. The LeBron situation, nobody has ever, nobody has put attention to. Uh, the mainstream media has uh, has <clears throat> has been uh, really mm, how do you say? Mainstream media has been away from the LeBron subject and also has been you know trying to uh, create a smokescreen for people to not put attention to the LeBron subject. As you know, all these kinds of killings and massacres that they occur in our country, they are brainwashed by the mainstream media over here in our country of Mexico. It is really important for us to not keep away and not, not to keep an eye on that situation because the United States government is waiting for results. It's waiting for results as you know the united states the united states government capture the uh the guilty part uh when it comes to the shootings of el paso the mexican government is not doing its job they supposedly capture an individual that it has to do with a sicario group and this group of a cartel group that is really famous for being sicarios around our country this group has been part of the cartel of Sinaloa that you know supposedly they were they were collided with them as they were collided with them they are in charge of you know taking care of the of the uh, <clears throat> of the hard situation when it comes to kidnapping and assassination as we know what happened to the Lebron family is kind of exactly like it's like that situation so Nobody's taking care of that, and it's the speculation is strongly because there's a huge agreement with the president of Mexico or the government of Mexico. So the government of the United States is trying to pressure as much to let Mexico know that they're keeping an eye on this situation, and if they're not going to resolve it, and if they're not going to resolve the situation with the cartels, they're going to intervene. Now that will be one of the worst decisions that it can take, that they can, uh, you know, allow. 
to let the military from another country come into our country. We don't need that. What we need is for our country to do their job, for our country to, to, uh, to start to stop the corruption, and for our country to start resolving their own problems. And to not let other, you know, other people's lives be coming over here and risking their lives for a country that is, has been corrupt since the initiation of, of, of government in our constitution has always been corrupt. And it's really difficult to take that away with just a, with, you know, with, with, an inter, with another government intervening in our country. Now, <clears throat> regarding the situation of security, in our city, it's getting worse by the minute. It's not. It's not. It's not. Uh, it's not getting better. Why it's not getting better? Uh, <clears throat> they put a new a new chief of security in the city of Tijuana, Baja California. This new chief of security wants to take out. Wants to take out regarding the cartel and regarding the crime, the, their organized crime. He wants to take out pieces piece by piece. What does that piece by piece tell you? The little stores where they sell drugs, where they sell the majority of uh, of this, you know, substances. All these, all these things, all these little houses, and all these, you know, particular little houses. He wants to start taking taking them out. What is this going to cost in our city? It's going to cost a war. Why? Because these little stores and these little hubs where they sell the majority of drugs over here in our in our in our city of Tijuana are a great provider for addicts and are a great provider for distributors. This is gonna hit the pockets immediately of the, their organized crime and it's gonna it's gonna uh, you know it's gonna be it's going to backfire on the government. They're gonna start doing this a strong uh, a strong uh, <coughs> vigilant and surveillance uh, operation uh, factor over here uh, with you know with the National Guard and with government officials they're going to start this week not too far today or not too far tomorrow so that is going to cause a lot of problems in our city of Tijuana regarding what is going on with the cartel situation now back to the back to the uh, in United Nations Pact of Education that one is going to be signed uh, it's going to be signed, and I'm saying signed, and hopefully it doesn't sign. But as you know, we don't know nothing about the United, Pact, United Nations Pact of Education. So I'm going to be the one that I'm going to be, uh, you know, reading a lot about the United Nations Pact of Education. What does it bring to the table? How much money are the government of Mexico is going to be spending? And this, this is going to bring more minors, and also is going to bring. Uh, more young, more young people into our country. Hopefully, the security factor comes into place right here in the south or of Guatemala when it comes to security of trafficking of children and trafficking of minors. Why I say that? Signing the United Nations Pact, it can it can create a smoke screen that you know they're creating schools for minors or they're creating schools for underage children. Now, if you put that. It's gonna, it's gonna implement that migrants are gonna bring now. It's gonna, they're gonna come more strongly as families, and as they are coming more strongly as families, there's going to be more trafficking of people, and there's gonna be more necessities as families. As you have seen, the last part of this mass migration at different parts and different locations of every border, families have been the number the top percentage of of the uh my immigration factor families and <clears throat> there's been low cases now it has decreased when it comes to creating families and creating fake marriages it has decreased because of the united states government has taken the responsibility of doing paternity tests and also doing blood uh, blood uh, blood tests uh, <clears throat> that's supposedly the uh, the uh, the United Nations and also human rights are fighting for the United States to stop doing that because it's against the rights of the immigrants. So it doesn't. They look at here. The United Nations 
and also the uh, the human rights, la Comisión Internacional de Derechos Humanos, the CID, Comisión Internacional CID, uh, H, CIDH, what they're trying to push is for the United States government to stop doing uh, uh, blood tests and, and, and paternity and maternity tests, plus paternity tests for the children. They're trying to stop it. They say that it's against their rights and it doesn't matter if it is a father or not. If they're running away from life, the United States is obligated to give them the political asylum. That is what the, Demo the, the leftist agenda is trying to push and also human rights and also the, the, <clears throat> the United Nations. That is what they're trying to push. The United States to cave in, to let everybody in. It doesn't matter if it is his father or not. It doesn't even matter if it is uh, his child or not. It doesn't even matter if it is under, under the child's will to come in the caravan or not. You're supposed to let him in. That is what they're pushing. That is what the United Nations is pushing. And that is what the, the Commission of International Human Rights are pushing. That is unbelievable. It's unbelievable. But that is that is what it comes. There's repercussions when it comes to the United Nations Pact of Education. We have to read a little bit of what is this United Nations Pact of Education and what are the consequences that they're going to bring in the caravan. You know, sometimes they make this kind of documents and they make this kind of treaties because it's a big smoke screen behind of what is coming and what is coming behind it is that there is going to be a lot of children now coming in the caravan a lot of minors so they're trying to get all the young uh <clears throat> they're gonna they're trying to get the population the 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 population regarding uh minors and regarding young uh young children out of their country so they can migrate through education that you know we got 1.9 million abandoned kids in mexico and 9.8 million underage uh, minors that they don't have resources for education in our country and now they're trying to change the educational system in our country this is completely going to affect directly the education system in Mexico is going to affect directly the education system and the teachers in Mexico. We're having a humongous problem on paying our teachers in our country. There were uh, ra there were rallies and, and, and riots in Tapachula and Chiapas in 2015 and 16 because of the teachers. They were not getting paid. And also that they were trying to take their rights as teachers and also they have been you know manifestations and they have been stri uh, strikes of teachers of not going to school and giving classes because they haven't got paid so you're trying to bring a united nations pact of education and you don't resolve your internal problems again mexico is doing exactly the same thing again if you have a problem with deportees, Mexican deportees, that we got more than 25,000 of them uh, in our country, and that we have <clears throat> a humongous problem with poverty in our problem in our country, that is more than 60 million and 28 million on critical condition. The demand of uh, <clears throat> of uh, of jobs is going to be humongous over here and the level of poverty is going to increase. That's why the economical increase on the first year of the president was zero. So now you're bringing education into the, and, and now you're bringing an education factor. What is that going to bring? The education level is not going to increase, it's going to decrease because you're going to invest all the little money that you have on building schools and education and funding a lot of children that they're coming in the caravan. Now, I don't feel that you know, this this minors and these children shouldn't have an opportunity for a better education in life. But talking about priorities in our country, our country is is suffering a lot regarding the situation with education on our on our own people, on our own Mexican people. And now with this United Nations Pact of Education, 
it's gonna backfire on all these children that have been waiting for a sponsorship that they've been waiting for uh, you know a scholarship that they've been waiting for some uh, some opportunity to get an education on some school and you know there are schools that they're <clears throat> they're packed there's no room so imagine this now you're signing a United Nations Pact of Education plus the, the United Nations Pact of Immigration. So they're building these treaties now. Now let's put attention real closely to what is gonna happen, so to what is gonna happen with <clears throat> with the, the Constitution. Let's let's put attention to what is gonna happen with the Constitution. That the Constitution now, Article 11 of the Constitution was reconstructed and the year 2016 by 2015 uh, 2012 2012 it was it was reconstructed so they can add this paragraph that says that migrants they can ask for uh, asylum and refugees uh, and they are going to give them every right to, due to international treaties now of course the United Nations Pact of Education is going to be another international treaty that is going to apply to the Article 11 of the Constitution of Mexico. How is this going to affect? Now everybody's saying, how is this going to be? Uh, how is this going to affect on the United States? <laughs> real simple, real simple. It's going to affect the United States as it's, it looks like a strategy. Then now they're going to start coming as families. And as families, because of the immigration loophole that the United States has, you're going to be receiving more asylum seeking. More asylum seeking. As the percentage of families that they're given asylum is really high. As regarding to California, California is a Democrat state. And remember what I told you guys. The statistics are that the states that they are giving more asylum right now are California, New Jersey, New York, Florida, and Texas. Now, this is the reason why a lot of the migrants, they're moving to eat to the East Coast. And a lot of them that they have been, uh, you know, asking for asylum, their families are in the East Coast. So the majority of them are in states that they are practically 100% liable to get the, the asylum. So we're talking about this, the majority of these families they're gonna get over here, the majority of them are going to get asylum. Why? Because the immigration loophole that is not that is, has not been filtered, that has not been composed, and that has not been fixed by uh, you know, the United Nations is going to get worse. Uh, it's going to get worse in terms of, in, you know, there needs to be more security in our country of Mexico for all these people. Uh, we cannot be risking people's lives. As you, Mexico is being, uh, not Mexico, the Mexican government is being completely irresponsible on signing uh, international treaties like the United Nations Pact now and the United Nations Pact of Immigration. And they are completely irresponsible for their security and insecurity. Now <clears throat> they're going to be completely irresponsible regarding the situation when it comes to uh, the, the education of, of children. And now you're gonna bring more families into the, uh, more, to, more families into the picture. So from now on, you guys are gonna see a lot of families traveling in the caravan. Remember this, a lot of families traveling in the caravan. There's gonna be a lot of families traveling in the caravan, like it has been since the last, I don't know, four or five months of the of the of the year. There's a lot of families that have been, you know, uh, uh, traveling, and a lot of those families are disguised families. A lot of them are disguised families. So for now, there's a speculation that a caravan is coming, a 1500 caravan supposedly, but it's getting dismantled as they are getting, you know, there's video, there's viral video, as this, you know, caravans are being inspection. And they're coming in buses or they're coming in trailers exactly the same strategy they were using back in uh in september of 2018 and seven uh, 2018 and also 17 the same strategy that they're using is the same strategy that is applying right now and they are doing the same strategy on on, on trailers 
and all these truck drivers they need to be uh you know they need to be arrested uh and also the uh, the head of charge that it was the head of the uh of the immigration uh, system over here in mexico he said on 2018 i will arrest and it's going against the law if you do uh if you do traffic people from guatemala or from mexico from the south door of tapachula all the way to the north i will arrest and it will be prosecuted the driver that is transporting migrants uh high, hidden migrants in the trailers so this is going to continue as i have said to everybody immigration situation is not going to stop it's not going to stop over here in our country in the meantime that we are in this united nations path good morning to everybody how's everybody doing i'm oscar blue for border network news god bless everybody as we are doing this segment right now uh for everybody that is watching and i'm going to jump uh here and there uh in facebook to uh, uh <clears throat> to give you guys you know a little update now that facebook is completely you know uh censoring everybody god bless everybody that is watching uh we need to know also good point we need to know when canada is going to sign the united nations pact of immigration also that that is another point that hopefully i will talk to a canadian citizen that hopefully i will talk to a canadian citizen so i can uh so i can get their view on on when they're going to sign the united nations pact of immigration hopefully i can find uh you know uh an independent journalist as i have found you know independent journalists from chile from barcelona from uh from nicaragua and from south america but now i'm trying to find a, an independent journalist from canada that we can discuss on the subject on when are they going to resign when is trudeau going to resign the united nations pact of immigration and if trudeau also is going to sign the united nations pact of education this is huge people why because if canada signs it and as mexico is going to sign it's going to sign it again they're going to clog again for another year the united states now the united states has the document right there has the petition the united states didn't sign it on 2018 the united nations is going to bring it again into into the united states so they can consider it to sign it of course president trump is not going to sign it but that is why the democrat agenda and the socialist democrat agenda in the united states has been pushing the guilty the guilt card on the immigration factor so the so they try to impeach donald trump so they can get all these treaties in all of these treaties they can get all these international treaties they can get them in that is why so it's not only that you know the the mexico is signing the united nations pact you guys need to put attention also to canada also to canada you guys need to put attention also to canada because if canada re-signs this pact and also brings the, the the united nations uh educational pact it's going to clog the united states now as hard as the, the mexico is getting clogged by central america so it's really important the next incoming month of december is really important as signing international treaties when it comes to international treaties and agreements with the united nations it's going to be extremely important the United Nations Pact of Education is going to be, I believe, that in June I will get the uh, the the accurate document, and I will get the uh, the accurate uh, information for you guys to know. This is going to be extremely important. This incoming month, as I told you guys, I've been telling you guys since September, October, and now November, I've been telling you guys, December and the late November is going to be really important as caravans are going to start coming by a small amount and they're going to try to cross the united states because of the weather and because of the international pact of immigration that is going to be resigned and it is happening again it is happening again so let's put attention to those agreements those international agreements don't forget tonight at 6 30 i will be live at youtube 
because Facebook is censoring too much. I will be live at YouTube at 6:30 at a particular shelter in Tijuana, Baja, California. If I put an if I put a, a announcement that it will be earlier than that, it will be around 5:30, 6 o'clock in the afternoon, 6 o'clock at night. But I'm putting 6:30, you know, regardless of a situation that happens. So I'm putting 6:30. So we'll be live at 6:30 tonight, talking about the United Nations Pact of Education and also live at the shelter talking to uh, immigrants that they are arriving from the places of Nicaragua. Nicaragua, a communist country now that is bringing a lot of migrants and there has been six cases now, six cases, six cases of families and individuals that they're coming from Nicaragua that they have been giving them 100% the asylum. So it is happening people when it comes to families and individuals that are coming from a communist and socialist country, the United States has given them the asylum. Just for you know, we have evidence and we are going to bring you that evidence tonight as I am going to interview a Nicaragua citizen that, that, he, that he came with a family and he came with almost uh, 18 more Nicaragua citizens and all of them, they just received the asylum. So. Uh, that is going to be really important for you guys as I'm going to be live at Super Chat later on tonight. But people want to consider donating to my work and my information. There's my PayPal right there on the bottom. Thank you so much. God bless you. I will be back with more information and I will be doing the Mexican live feed in a few moments. God bless you all. Stay safe. And always remember, oh, before I go, follow my partner, Conservative Anthony, as he's running for Congress in District 16 of El Paso. Vote for him, man, and follow him. He's the solution, man. He's the truth. God bless you all. Stay safe. And always remember, peace and love, everybody. Because always, your country is first.